the support lately has been insane and now we're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube so please follow now hit the bell hit the like button comment and uh, most of all enjoy the video have you watched a Singapore dude in YouTube talk about your camp out of nowhere no there's something really interesting happening on Twitch here that's regarding health and stuff. And I think it's a very positive thing, or it could be a really positive thing, but the execution is so problematic that in my opinion, the whole thing is gonna cause more harm than good for most of the participants and whoever gets influenced by such an event. So what I'm talking about is Cam Canute by OTK. OTK is a streaming organization, a group of streamers that live together in the same house and make content together. And basically they hired this professional bodybuilding coach who is named Canute and it's Cam Hired professional bodybuilding coach. If fuck off, it was me and Miss Gibbs' idea, and the other joined in. I'm not a professional either. I'm a professional pepega. I'm Canute. It's a 30-day body transformation. They're hitting the gym hard, managing their diet and all that stuff. And I can see the positive intentions behind all of this. They want to. Ins Do you know what the intentions was? The intentions are prompt was just to bully Miski for a month in the gym and the others were debated by Twitch chat into joining. Inspire themselves to be healthier and in turn through the content inspire the viewers <laughs> to be healthier, hit the gym and take care of their fitness and all this stuff. And I respect <laughs> that, that but the execution is so problematic. Probably because Knut is a professional bodybuilding coach grounded in bro science, but it's so problematic that as someone who has been in that position where I had to transition from an unhealthy life style to a healthy lifestyle before i definitely think there's so many problems with the execution that it's just like it's too extreme too do, do you know what now he's talking about my uh, my coach bro science he should check out uh, what we're doing it's uh my my coach I'm, I'm 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 just this is his other client that is doing the same well you can call it bro science but well some of them has placed six in Olympia. He has produced a lot of uh, professional bodybuilders. He has pushed already professional bodybuilders to become even better professionals. Like we're, we're doing his, his way. Like th this is the result of the, the these guys are doing the same. Yes, it's it's bodybuilder uh, style of training, but you can't just say it is uh, bro science too short term, too focused on results, that it's going to cause more harm than good. You see, the whole thing about creating a positive impact in terms of health and fitness on someone is that it's not really about the short term results right now because losing weight and building muscle, all that will come in time and with consistency and with proper training. Yeah, that's, uh, haven't we pointed out that hundreds of times already? I, I think I have mentioned it a bunch of times that it's consistency that counts. And this, uh, this is like a, we're, we're, we're doing it this way because it's more content training, diet, and nutrition. But the thing is, if you want to invoke positive change on someone when it comes to health and fitness, it's about changing the mentality, the mindset, building the right habit, building the right attitude towards food, nutrition, rest, workout, and all these things, and making it like a large part of their lives that it's part of their priorities to manage it well. But the thing is... Uh, yes, dude, but we don't have five years to do this project, okay? It's supposed to be entertainment as well. We don't have five years to to show off in the gym. That's why we have to do it a bit this faster. Is built around a thirty. I, I got a viewer and, you know, wanted results fast and focus on the short term. It's not really designed to build good mindset. It's too extreme, too intense. That it is both psychologically and physically damaging to the participants. I don't think it has been damaging for the participants. And we have been really clear in saying that this isn't the way you should go from zero to a hundred. I think we have many. He hasn't even watched. Uh, and unnecessarily so, not in the name of more benefit or more progress necessarily. True. He's just trying to get in on the hype. But he didn't hit the algorithm, it seems like. It doesn't seem like he hit the algorithms that hard.
particularly in many of these cases, as I will soon illustrate with certain examples. Also, the program is going to inspire less people than it possibly could be because it makes working out, being healthy, managing your diet and having the right attitude towards fitness seem so extreme and so intense of a thing that it makes the barrier of entry of the whole thing seem really high. So if a viewer who's used to a lazy lifestyle sees it, they're less likely to go, hey, I want to do something like that and ah! become fit and healthier. Because you see this group of idiots going hard in the gym? It's like, you can, you, you can uh, do whatever the, whatever you like. You don't need to dislike the video. Listen, the best way of disliking a YouTube video, listen, I'll tell you how it is. It's to not watch, don't end the video, don't click any buttons, just ignore it. That's how you dislike for real. Dislike button is like the upvote button. Commenting, liking or disliking is just as good. Watching video is good as well. Ignore and leave. This would be, if we wanted to ignore, I don't care if we watch the whole thing. Because with such an intense program, you kind of send off the message that oh, boy, no, thank you for the prize. Has to be all or nothing. It has to be extremely perfect, extremely precise, extremely painful and torturous and insane or intense, or else you shouldn't do it Ego at all. And obviously, that kind of message true. is not going to be very effective in getting people who are not used to being healthy at all. <laughs> you need to start small and build up the discipline, build up the right habits, build up the right mindset from small to big. But you're not going to do that with such an insane, intense, and extreme example focused on short-term results. Okay. Uh, enough flabbering. Let's talk about specific examples of this extreme unsustainable method that they're doing to achieve results. It's the method. I won the Arnold Cla Arnold Classic UK with. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. It actually, is so extreme in many cases. It's kind of counterintuitive that like if they did less, they probably could have gotten more results. So let's. Start okay, that is bullshit. Now you're now you were lying. I, I can agree with you. Uh, that that is too extreme for people to start on, but we have said that all the time. But it's not too much if you want good results or like max. This is max. You're you're pro now you're promoting not going all in, and I agree. You don't need to go this far. I a hundred percent agree. You don't need to go this far to uh, get results. You don't need this to, um, uh, to, to get healthy. This is probably a bit above that, but this gives results. Start with the first issue I have with the whole program, and that is partly the diet. So this is Miss Kiff's meal plan, and for context, he is a high body fat individual. Not an insult, it's just truth. 70 kilograms and a five foot six male. And straight off the bat, you can see an issue here with just the basics. Like the macros are just blown out of proportion. You don't even know what you're talking about, you dumbass. Okay, he will say, oh, it's too much protein. I like that he called my skips a fatty. That's that's fine. Listen, uh, there, there's a lot of science behind protein. And, and now we're talking maximizing. Yes, you don't need that much protein to grow. Like two grams per kilo body weight gives you about 90% of the results. So for most people, that will not benefit you to go even higher because you're not going hard enough in the gym. You're, you, it doesn't matter those those extra percent that you can get from because four grams of protein per kilo body weight gives a little bit more, but it's such a small amount. But in most cases, it's just a waste. 264 grams of protein in a diet for a 70 kilogram person is just plain stupid, daft, and pointless. The more why is it stupid? Give me one argument why it is stupid. Give me one argument, like pointless can be. Most you need is 2 to 2.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body. The most you need, and again, you're, you're you're dumb. So so in worst case, you're just using it as energy. It's I don't know how we can say it's stupidity. Worst case, it is just being used as energy. Burned up. 
body weight even on an intense cut and even then that recommendation is only really meant for lean individuals who are already doing some intense heavy cut not for a newbie trainer with excess calories stored in their belly and body fat and is you know just starting out with plenty of newbie gains. I, I think it's fun on top to of watch that, this diet is kind of low in terms of fats which is going to be very important in maintaining hormonal and most importantly testosterone because we're talking about how, how much fat do you think you need a day to maintain hormone production? 40 max? 40 grams? Like 30 grams? 100 kilos? 40 grams? Yes, that's the point. It isn't too low. It is low, but it isn't too low. <laughs> uh, muscle building here. Production, which for these extremely likely how much, low... How, how much fat do you think he needs then? Testosterone streamers. Not an insult. It's more than likely true that they have low testosterone because of their sedentary lifestyle with unhealthy food. Um, it's it's going to be important that they get enough fat. Also because they're also going to be on a calorie deficit. Research, uh, so they well, need that fat to make sure their hormone levels, the their testosterone production isn't too heavily affected by all of this sudden change in lifestyle, all of this intense you know, things that they're hitting their system with. The calories that were spent on these excessive grams of protein could have easily be spent on more carbs so that there is more fuel for their body and glycogen during workouts could easily have been spent on more fats for better bodily function, as I've mentioned, or even spent on things to keep these people more happy, more fulfilled with their diet by maybe... Maybe we should give them some. Uh, maybe we should give them some, some fried, uh, fried rice instead with some more fat carbs. Maybe giving them a little bit of sugar in their would diet be happy. instead of cutting all of it out. Look, giving them some sugar. Why would you give them sugar? What the hell would you give them sugar? Do you think that will make them feel better? That will make them spike higher blood sugar faster down, and they will feel worse. Like, okay, you, I, you, I see your argument. They might not need that much protein. And they can, we could have moved some over to the carbs. Yes, yes, that could have worked. And they would probably get the same result. Sugar will crash them. Correct. These are and, and they would get more hungry. That's right. They're probably used to an unhealthy diet. All right. They yes. treat food probably as some sort of positive joy in their life. So if you suddenly cut out all the sugar, it's going to be unnecessarily painful. On the other hand, though, you could use this to your advantage. You could, as a coach, use the sugar as a little reward at the end of the day for these people working out. End of the day, at least give it to them post-workout. If you want to give them some fast-acting carbs, give them to them post-workout. End of the day. Or maybe have it as an intra-workout supplement to make sure their glycogen stores. Did you read what intra-workout supplements were using, mister? Did you even read the diet? If you see there, and if you have a look, they're getting some sugars uh, intra-workout and post-workout are replenished or maybe as a post-workout to reward psychologically these people who are used to an unhealthy junk food lifestyle and love sugar you know what i mean just like give them something to look forward to something to reward themselves with you don't have to spend all the damn calories on protein spend a little bit of, of it on like sugar so that the whole diet is less painful and there's before training okay there's a no carbs before training intra workout only eaa this you pulled up the low carb there and it's not a fuck didn't add any carbs post workout either. Okay, they're suffering. Let them suffer. Something and to, to take it out to get the lower cal calories. To. On top of that, there is a severe <laughs> lack of variety in the food of the meal plan, with it really like lacking heavily in micronutrients and flavor. Also, it's in Okay, what micronutrients uh, do, do, do they lack? And what flavors are lacking in this diet? They can use whatever fucking spices they want. Three, four of the meals are whey protein shakes. Three, four of the meals are whey protein shakes. The, 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 the first comment on this video is, but the whole idea of Camp Knuts was meant to show what happens when normal people go through a bodybuilding routine for 30 days. They all agreed to it. Definitely see the content angle, but even if that uh, was the case, this is a pretty poor routine for anyone. Well, it was pat. Uh, 
he says it's a poor routine. I, I want to see him argue with Patrick Tor about that. <laughs> Are we with whey protein shake? That's not going to make the hunger pangs go away. And could have easily been more filling meal. But you... Okay, back to molding of this dumb fucking guy. He was fucking advocating for putting more sugar into their diet and he's complaining about whey protein not being filling and he wanted me to put more sugar. Ha! Ah, what are you talking about? Sugar is literally the least filling macro. Correct. <laughs> Lacking in satiety, which is important if you are getting someone who's used to eating a lot to eat less so that they can lose weight. You need to make sure they are satiated so they don't feel con- Oh, so what are we making here though? Instantly painfully hungry and are more likely to cheat on their diet and fail the diet. Keep them feeling full with high satiety index foods and they will more than likely stick to the diet a lot more easily, a lot more successfully and come out from it with a less painful experience and hence a more positive idea. Okay, we changed some of Miskiff's egg meals to, to whey protein because he's allergic to eggs. The, the original diet, which also was linked, had egg whites, but, but Miskiff, he was allergic to eggs. So we had to find a substitute. Is listening to TikTok of doctor. what fitness and health is like. Thankfully, though, on the micronutrients fronts, they're being told to take plenty of supplements in terms of my vitamins, minerals, and all the iron, zinc, magnesium stuff that you need. So it's not all bad, but there's also a lot of duffness with the amount, the type, and the obsession with timing of supplements in the meal plan. I mean, BCAAs are part of their damn supplementation stack, which are proven as kind of redundant to be taking, especially when you have an excess, more than enough protein in your diet, 270 grams, you definitely get enough BCAAs. On Wake Up, we're giving them some a, a good variation in amino acids. We're giving them amino acids in the morning before they're about to do their cardio because it's fast into the system. They don't need to digest for a long time. It's just straight into the bloodstream. Nothing else, that's in the morning. Th that's all. EAAs or essential amino acids as well are also kind of redundant here because these are not like extremely lean athletes on a massive deficit operating at the age of... Again, he's just talking. No, of course not, but they're still doing the same. The performance on steroids, so they definitely don't need to take essential amino acids like three times a day before workout, during workout, all that stuff. Like, why? What's the point? Also, while having a quick absorption whey isolate shake after a workout is a great idea to replenish plenty of those aminos, why not have some carbs too thrown in since you have so much protein that you don't need so that you can actually have that increase in insulin post-workout so that absorption of... I agree with him and that that's that's a good thing. I agree with him. We could have thrown in some fast acting carbs post workout. Yes. With the aminos and it is better. And why specifically 15 minutes after workout they need HMB and glutamine to supplements that, that these individuals definitely don't really Because it was supposed to be together with carbs. I just removed the carbs. I could have put it all together with the hydrolase. Yes true but it, the, the the reason is post workout directly you'd get in the in this and then it should have been this mixed with carbs yes that's my fault but it doesn't matter it's beginners it's also over complicating things so like the viewers it's me, I'm gonna watching, it, by know, Mr. Go, like, why is it so complicated is working out and being healthy really such a complicated no it isn't that complicated to do working out and being healthy again the whole thing was to show them what a hundred percent perfection would be, which in most cases is useless. But but at least like it was to show what is hundred percent complicated thing an intense thing and then they get the wrong idea then they get dissuaded to follow along and actually make a positive change in their lives and get inspired so that's another issue there so that another issue i have with this supplement stack recommendation is that their starting dose is three milligrams of melatonin i understand taking melatonin for better sleep proper sleep cycle is important for you know good muscle recovery and good health especially if you're doing something intense like a 30-day body transformation but three milligrams as a starting dose for melatonin is way too much look no it isn't 
you can go to the fucking grocery store here and it's uh, three milligram is nothing absolutely nothing she doesn't even know i take 10 milligram over the counter 10 milligram is nothing no three milligram is just a normal lowest dose three milligram is a baby it is at least not a high dose in any any uh, way Melatonin gummies are five milligram each. Yes, I take ten milligram. I know it is just bullshitting. Three milligram is starter dose. He said three milligram is a lot for a start. I way more than misgif. Okay, so technically it would be like less concentrated in my body. Uh, I'm taller than misgif, and also I'm fitter than misgif, so I should be more energetic than misgif. And if I take three milligrams of melatonin to sleep, I take melatonin like once every couple of days if I'm struggling to sleep. If I take three milligrams of melatonin, I get a hangover the next day that is worse than if I got really heavily drunk from alcohol because it's. Okay, dude. Now, now you're going far, far out there. <laughs> More hangover than being drunk from three milligrams of melatonin. Okay, I, I could see some of the critique when it was saying this was too hard for people. As I, again, we said it was not supposed to be a starting thing for everyone. But this, now we are actually being out there. This is bullshit. Too strong. I take one milligram or like half a three milligram tablet, which is like 1.5 milligrams, and it is enough. And I personally think starting off at three milligram is it's just too damn much. It's going to zoink them out and then make them hungover and tired the next day. And next is on to the flavor of the food. So now I know Canute, the, the pro coach, is not a chef or nutritionist, so he's not going to be the great guy to give this kind of advice. But seriously, like looking at the food, it makes me sad because I know how good 1800 calories can taste because I cook my own food and I can make good 1800 calories. Nick, feel welcome to prepare it as, if, uh, as you want as long as you're not adding calories. That's what I told them food right it is an unnecessary difficult diet because of this for no reason because you can easily make sure, healthy natural food. friendly food taste good and not be what depressing is you can ask greg What's you it? said he'll sell you his cookbook and it probably is a good idea to get these beginners on that greg du set anabolic cook dude you have watched too much uh, fitness youtube lately Work because whatever Coach Canute got them eating is painful and unnecessarily torturous. And the thing is, if you're gonna get like these unhealthy people to get, yeah, I, I agree with him. If you're just going for for a healthy lifestyle, I can agree with him. It is unnecessary. But this is fucking thirty days of hundred percent again. It's content to show them how they're suffering a little bit. Oh my fuck. Kinga. It isn't suffering. Eating steak, is that suffering? Eating chicken breast, is that suffering? I don't think so. People even like cod, the fish. Is it suffering eating? They can. They, they, they were told, buy the fucking nicest steak you can find. You can you can have the... This guy says money. They can just buy the nicest, most tender <laughs> fucking steak that exists. Cod can be good as well. Yes. <laughs> Nick, $130 filet you forgot, yeah. Oh, I'm proud that you're talking this man gently. I'm criticizing what he's saying, nothing more, and I'm allowed to criticize what he's saying because he doesn't get the point on board with the whole idea of long-term fitness and health, you need to make it easy, less difficult, and sustainable for them. I mean, a lot of these people probably enjoy food a lot, which is why they are unhealthy to begin with, and they use it. Think about the fact that some small YouTuber is making reaction videos of your regime for boys. Yeah, it's fun. They even, the, the, the biggest win was that someone made uh, Camp Knut merch before we did. Wasn't the point to do a diet and workout based on how you started or did it, etc.? What kind of point is this dude trying to make? Correct, mister. You're, you're correct. It was to show them what bodybuilders do. And I think we have inspired more people than this guy ever will. Okay, now I'm criticizing stupid things, but he is criticizing that we're not inspiring enough people. So I will stop myself there. It's just what he said there was bullshit.
use it as some sort of escape or some sort of reward. For example, like Nick and MP Law, who is severely struggling. Like he cheated on a diet by eating a sandwich the other day and he was part. Nick can't eat eggs. He hadn't tasted rice before. Jesus Christ. You have to you have to force him into doing a few things that he hasn't done before. He can't eat eggs because it doesn't have the correct textures. Jesus Christ, you can't oh. Punished for it on stream and I was like, of course he's gonna cheat on a diet. He loves eating unhealthy junk food and suddenly you take away all his sugar, all his fats, put him on a massive caloric deficit, make him train like hell in the gym, I mean, and then like after this. that expect him to like, be okay with this dull bland food. Come on. If you're gonna take all the fats, all the sugars, and all the caloric surplus, it's at like least give him some flavorful yeah, food to look forward to. This diet, this to diet to is gonna I be take over it almost. before Camp Canute is over. I'm just gonna keep it 100p on the stack. Okay, this diet is horrible. It is horrible. Okay, I have all the money in the world, and I'm eating fucking grilled chicken, rice, and broccoli. Yeah. Give me some fucking salmon and asparagus, okay, or something. This diet is abhorrent. Okay, I hate this fucking diet so much. I've been eating nothing but rice, chicken, and broccoli for the past 10 fucking days. Crown that you're correct. Over it. And you know the worst thing is? That's I'm about to go cook some more of it no, in five fucking difference. minutes and eat it again. Like, and there's no point to having bland food. Like, it makes you feel like you're doing more, but you're doing yourself a disfavor by torturing yourself for no reason. I mean, here are some good examples of how to make your food flavorful without adding much calories. Speed run. Bullion cube. 30 calories for a single stock bullion cube. And stock pot. Yes, it's a bit much sodium, but you can make enough stock for three different delicious soups with vegetables, tomatoes, you know, blended vegetables. There's a lot of things you can do there. Stews, which are going to be very- Do you think Nick will fucking make a vegetable soup? Very satiating as well. Peri peri sauce, 12 calories per serving, and like a small bottle is only 72 calories, but a small bottle is enough to burn your asshole and cover a whole chicken, a whole rotisserie. But we said they could add in ketchup, calorie free ketchup, or not calorie free, but sugar free ketchup. We said they could add in soy sauce. They have been using other calorie free sauces, so what's your point? Tisserie chicken and peri peri sauce and have a good time. Sugar free ketchup, it's a good example. Chocolate sugar. So you, so you haven't been watching our videos. He's, he just mentioned some of the things we mentioned for them. So he hasn't sugar -free watched syrup, the video. Uh, sugar free jam, says. that's also a thing. Of course, there's also spices like garam masala. That's a great spice mix. There's so many easy ways to make like your. So you haven't heard that I've said they can use whatever spices they want. So you think so this guy thinks that you're just cooking the the chicken with no taste. Your chicken breast, your food tastes absolutely phenomenal, absolutely amazing. Without adding calories and hurting your macros and hurting your progress, that I don't understand why they're making it just unnecessarily hard. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, it is just a hate watcher. I've watched a little bit. Harden themselves with this kind of diet. It's it's just stuffed. That is so good. Mm. It's like not even bad cold. Mm -hmm. eating, they are eating the steaks. Nick steaks. And the, the thing is, the fact that these streamers aren't being taught that, as well as the viewers who are watching along, who are most likely beginners Take and it as a cold life skills, skills thing I, I, I do. Twitch. I do, but I, I like, I, I'm using his video as content right now, just so you know, I don't fucking care if the, if, if it wasn't uh, just for hate watching him a little bit and making some content back, I wouldn't even watch this video. Yes, whatever you think, fuck off. Means that they are more than likely going yes. to have the impression Using that back, good, eating, yes. good dieting, and having a healthy consumption of food and a healthy relationship with food has to be sad and painful and extreme and burn you out. When it could really still be enjoyable, sustainable, and fun. Like, I have plenty of fun eating the food I eat. I do too. I love the food I eat. The diet food I eat, it's the best. If you just try out some different sp spices, you test how you cook it so it tastes uh, like it is like a juicy chicken breast fillet when it's cooked, and you put on some, some different spices, it tastes really good, my man.
eat even though it's plenty healthy and plenty you know good for my macros and this kind of unnecessary psychological torment will just result in more harm than good in the long run because of that warp perception that i keep talking about that it will create next up i have an issue food with quality in norway program, is better than which, what you get oh on the gosh. cheap where do i system. start four three, one more two more Five. Oh, okay. Let's go, baby. Five. Take a look at it for yourself. 13 working sets per body part, followed by a massive pump focus drop set. It's too damn much volume in one workout for each body part and will result in both unnecessary psychological and physical strain. Let's start with the physical problems here. The first issue here is that that sheer volume per body part is just too much for a natural beginner lifter. It's unnecessary strain on beginners whose muscular, nervous, cardiovascular and skeletal systems are not ready and not prepared or adapted for. Because of that, the work <laughs> will be unnecessarily harder for no real benefit or gain. Yeah, I agree. It can be a bit uh, uh, hard, but they have all been happier. They have all been happier. They have talked about how much better they feel. Like Tectone, way less anxiety, feeling better, everyone being just... You see a smile on their faces... The fuck is this? Wait, I give you, with your tempo through a video, here's the link, I give you 10 hours of content to get through this 21 minute video. <laughs> People talk. <laughs> you will love this, Wake. It's even telling us to, <laughs> to, to give them Greg Duse's cookbook at one point in this video. <laughs> and create unnecessary fatigue, soreness, and might actually even result in injury because then newbies who might not have perfect form might result in things like overtraining, Ill illness from a stressed immune system because they're hitting their system so hard that the immune system is just operating at its limit because it needs to clear out all the dead cells or the waste material that comes from hitting yourself with such hard volume saying, no. and might even result in the worst case situation of things like a rhabdo. In the bodybuilding world, junk volume refers to any training you do that take no one this hasn't happened to anyone except time and energy but has no actual benefit in terms of muscle or strength gain so it's basically exactly what it sounds like volume is the amount of work or simply the number of hard sets that you do and junk is garbage it's not actually worth anything and as we'll see i think the scientific evidence is pretty clear in showing that junk volume is a real phenomenon we have junk used sets a lot of real phenomenon and studies have shown pretty a big bed confidently now, that on average beyond six bit. to eight sets per body part per workout the sets that you do after that don't really provide any additional hypertrophic effect that is kind of worth the effort True. and if you don't know what hypertrophic effect Turning is it it's the effect that builds muscle so that's the kind of stuff you want and in certain cases it actually does more harm than good to this hypertrophic effect and more than what? 68 sets per body part per workout because it often introduces unnecessary fatigue soreness and that might actually slow down this hypertrophy effect. Now, Canute is a I have coach that, uh... who is definitely on performance enhancing drugs like steroids. Don't try to argue, he definitely is. And because. No, no, no. That fake news. I have even have the 100%. Not the emo. Because of that, his <laughs> regimes are going to be more catered to and more comfortable experience <laughs> with professional clients who are professional bodybuilders who are more than likely going to be people on performance enhancing drugs. And because of that, it's not a good idea to apply it to natural and beginner lifters, especially because they do not have the work capacity to survive <laughs> said program and actually benefit from such a program. They could easily have a workout regime, a body part split that isn't so bro signs the one they're doing where they're hitting only one body part once a week i mean spread the volume that you want to hit their body part with across the week you probably can have more could have done that as well body part doing it that way which is good first he complained about it being too much volume uh for one body part for one working and now he's saying he wants more volume great for increasing it's just trading yeah you can have less sets per body part per workout and that will enable better focus yes. because you know you have less sets in your mind left so there's less mental strain you're able mental strain you're going to the gym because it's fun being in the gym at least after a while, it's fun. And even in this camp, we're eight guys in the gym plus a cameraman. And we're having a good time together. It can be a physical strain. Yes, pushing that hard. But it's just good for us mentally and for them as well. 
same shirt. True. <laughs> more each set and that means the quality of sets will be better and more easy to recover from because there's less sets to recover from the sets are also going to be less likely junk sets and result in better You're results getting... with the same if not even less effort basically it would just be more efficient if they didn't do such a bro sign split and maybe did Again, he is arguing against one of the best coaches in the world with the best, uh, absolutely best track record or one of the best track records in bodybuilding. That's what we're trying to show them. Body parts two to three times a week instead of just having all the volume focused on a know, singular day it just makes no sense to me. And then there's the psychological course. aspect of it. I've I mean, hitting the body part 14 that. sets with the last set being this crazy weird drop set is mentally going to be extremely challenging for these streamers, True, most of them be. are definitely used to a life where they are not very active and unhealthy. It's unnecessary mental pain, which as I said, with the diet will result in a what perception of what fitness, health and it's bodybuilding is, which that is correct. would ruin the mindset of the participants and people watching along and the viewers. And that is going to affect their health in the long term if it ends up being toxic, be it through body dysmorphia, be it through overtraining, or be it through right. like toxic, be it through and that look this guy is smiling it's going to affect the health in the long term if it ends up being this guy seems pretty happy toxic, yet true. he seems pretty happy dysmorphia, be it through overtraining or be it through like an all or nothing mindset where they feel like if they don't do insane extreme stuff then they might not do it at all that's the problem with 30 day fast transformations I have nothing against pro bodybuilding by the way I love that shit I love watching Ronnie Coleman and Chris Bumstead and stuff but yeah if we're talking about health and fitness. Silvan, thank you for the prime. Back then. Uh, I mean, uh, basic. You know, you got, you know, your tests. Your, and it's using uh, this ball. clip. Another issue I have is that Knut is not having a disclaimer or like making it really clear to the audience that he is on PEDs. I mean, there is no argument here. There's no debate. He is. What the hell is that? I'm not even training in that fucking show. I'm just training them. Why are you? Should I put up a fucking text in the corner of stream? <clears throat> no. What is this? What is this? Duh. Is definitely on it. But what's important here is that I feel like he needs to be coming out and being making it apparent that his physique is only possible because of performance enhancing drugs and. Oh my fucking god. Dude, I'm vegan, Natty. Just stop. You can't argue that. Yeah, it's hyper consistent, fucking... hyper insane training. You put it out there so the standards and expectations for the viewers or the people watching along. Do they even think anyone would like to look like this? That's not the point. There's none of the streamers that are trying to become bodybuilders. There's none of the viewers. It. I can look like this and still promote health for fuck's sake it, it, what is he talking about it isn't to show off how to look like knut make mischief into knut that's not what we're trying to say it isn't point of after this camp the point isn't look like knut no one has ever even tried. Aren't too high that they dis develop some sort of toxic body dysphoria mentality. Well, they develop some sort of problem. Oh my... <coughs> Sorry, guys. But if you just start training and you're doing... You won't become... You won't win Arnold Sports Festival UK like I did. I'm just... Sorry. <laughs> You can't have that Arnold medal hanging in the back of your room where it says first place. Sorry. If that was your only goal by watching Camp Knut, I'm sorry. Then you have been misinformed. Problematic self-image issues because they look at that Knut and they go like, why can't I get those kinds of gains? Because it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come naturally and it doesn't come quickly. All three of those things need to be emphasized by Knut. When what the fuck is it? Busy. I'm no DMCMing him. I love this event's kind of basic concept and the positive intentions behind it. I Thank just you. Have you have been so negative. So uh, no. He, has, he doesn't talk about minor. He's only talking about like other events. People refer to his physique. In conclusion then, while I love this event's kind of basic... What the fuck? I can't get your physique in 30 days. Should I left a disclaimer? <laughs>
concept and the positive intentions behind it, I just have severe issues with the execution. As I, as someone who has struggled with building the right mindset, staying fit and staying consistent with health and working out in the past, I can see a lot of potential problems that will likely happen because of such a program to the participants and viewers that follow along because it is too extreme, too short-sighted and focused on it's physical healthy, change rather so than good. positive health and mental growth. Uh, it's Thank you. kind of misinformed in certain areas with a lot of bro sciencey things and it's also very poorly catered clearly with too much of its foundation and its program coming from professional bodybuilding which means like the programs are really going to be uh, better by the way i'm an amateur bodybuilder i have to clarify that this guy's misinforming you i'm not a professional bodybuilder at all set up for people on steroids and actually are really professionals who have the right mindset, right diet and right focus for it and are used to it. I personally think a 30 day transformation in of itself is just a flawed idea. Change and transformation is a lifelong game. Self I, I, again, we, we, I, I can't just stay here. It's even 90 day maximum on my ESTA and then I would have to leave the US. And then I have to, and it says also that I, I have to stay home for a reasonable amount of time. So, so it doesn't seem like I'm just going, stepping over the border to Mexico, coming back to Texas. Because I've been, uh, been like, we can't stay here for five years and show long term progress improvement isn't quick and to chase fast results you will only result in failure if you're too lazy to watch the rest of the video at least watch this part and understand this fitness and health are an infinite game the only way to win at fitness and health is to keep playing and keep being consistent it is true it is true but you could fr going from zero to making some good progress can be done pretty fast and it goes slower and slower. And if you do that, you're going to get the gains that you want. You're going to get the physique, the health, the energy, and all the benefits of fitness and health that you want. But the thing is, if you want to keep on playing and to do that consistently and make it easy for yourself to keep doing that, you need to be building the right mindset, the right habits, the right stuff that will carry on for the rest of your life. And I hope that they can tweak the program since they are making a lot of mistakes that they don't really need to by being so extreme. I have been there trying to do extreme things trying to change my physique i haven't invited you to the camp okay it doesn't matter what you did quickly but the one thing that i've learned over the years after trying all these extreme fat diets and extreme transformation <laughs> things is that the key to it all is slow steady consistent and sustainable because so long as you're that uh, what is saying there there is 100 percent correct key to get to results in fitness is long term was anyone surprised? Sustainable and consistent in how you do fitness and health, you'll keep on doing it. So long as you're constantly doing it, you're winning. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you disagree with whatever I have, I have said, put it down in the comments. I would love to hear you. And if you agree, hit the like button, subscribe. I'll be talking more about fitness life. and self-development stuff in the future as well. Top of like, are we giving any fake expectation? We're showing what can be done in 30 days. I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of showing off what exactly is realistic. If you're going in 100%, that can be done in 30 days. No, no. Do you know what? I think this video is good to have. It's fun to watch. Fuck off if he wants to complain. <laughs> Go to the gym first, then you can speak it. I work out way more than you. <laughs> that is a good one. That is actually a good one, mister. <laughs> <laughs>